Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I wanted to do something quick and casual, talking about the custom sensor boards that I built for Cthulhu and Maximizer. These two recently competed at Norwalk Havoc at the May event, and I got a lot of questions about how to build my own, how the sensors bo sensor boards work, and why I put them on the robots. I figured it was easiest just to create a video on it so others can reference it and hopefully build their own. So let's jump right into it. First things first, why would you want sensors on your brushless motor? Well, without sensors, a brushless ESC is essentially guessing where it wants to start the motor at. It uses the back EMF generated on the non-active phase to get a rough idea of where the magnets are at, but at very low speeds, it's incredibly difficult for an ESC to start the motor. What the three Hall effect sensors placed around the circumference of a motor do is allow the ESC to more accurately tell if the motor is moving or not. It's not an encoder, so it doesn't know absolute position relative to the armature, but the three Hall effect sensors will switch on and off when the motor rotates, allowing for the ESC to know the RPM of the stator. The placement of these three Hall effect sensors around the motor is very critical both to each other and to the stator itself. For the exact measurements, let's jump into CAD where I've got this pulled up and we'll take a look at what it looks like. All right, taking a look at this sensor board in Fusion 360, my CAD program of choice, I've opted for a 120 degree arc segment, which is 60 degrees between each of the Hall effect sensors. Now, these sensors can be placed nearly wherever you want, but they all have to follow a governing equation. The equation that determines that spacing is this right here. You take 360 degrees and divide it by three times an N number, where N is any positive integer. In this case, I'm using 14 as an example. You then multiply that by the number of pole pairs of your motor. I'm using seven here as an example because nearly all outrunners are going to have 14 magnets. 14 magnets corresponds to seven pole pairs. For example, if you have a two magnet inrunner, that is a single pole motor. A four magnet inrunner is a two pole motor. So the more poles you have on your motor, the more magnets, the wider variety variability in placement that you can have on your sensor on your sensors then you can change this n number to change your spacing between the sensors so you may be asking okay why would i why did you choose 14 why are these sensors placed like this well the the easiest sensor placement is just to place them 120 degrees apart from each other just in a triangle and that is what you have to do on any two pole motor because that that's just how the math works out for that I, by moving the sensors together, you are increasing the error, the chances of error if the uh, PCB is off at all. By placing the sensors further apart, your, your error is essentially one degree uh, off on the sensors is one degree off electrically. When you cut that in half, or it, like I have here, and only use one third, if I'm off by a degree on the sensor, that's three times that effective error. So you can imagine when you move these sensors really close together to get a nice and compact board, your effective error increases a lot. Some speed controls are able to compensate for this, others are not. With this being one of my first designs for the sensor board, I wanted to go some with something that was easy to fit inside a robot, but also had a wide tolerance for error. Um, as for the, the other parameters on the board, the radial spacing can be seen here. So what I've modeled is this is the Hall effect sensor from the top down. This point right here is the magnetic center point uh, found from the spec file for this. And I've drawn my sensor around this. I modeled the outside of my motor can to the center of magnetic uh, pickup as two millimeters, which works out to about like 1.5 millimeters physical spacing between these two. Uh, the first version of this board I, I did, this was actually a lot greater, and it causes a lot of issues. It doesn't consistently pick up. So this 2 millimeter number to the magnetic center seems to work pretty well. With a larger motor, you could probably get away with more. For vertical spacing of this board off of the base, or like aligned to the motor, I'll throw a picture up on screen of what I'm talking about. I mounted a 0.15 inch TPU spacer underneath this board in order to mount it to the chassis of the robot and keep it elevated. Essentially, you want this sensor so that the magnet is 
like entirely covering it. You don't want to put this right at the edge of the magnet where the magnetic field is weaker. Applying all that theory to the real world, here's the sensor board now installed inside Cthulhu. You'll notice that the board is not clocked exactly 90 degrees to the motor, and that's by design. In order for the ESC to fire the correct coils at the correct times, the sensor board must be properly aligned to the motor armature, which is the center core of these windings. I created a mark over here. I created a marked PLA test plate in, to experimentally determine where that location was. There are actually three working positions of the board that can be mounted in, depending on the order that you plug that you plug in wires A, B, and C. Once the phasing and rotation are experimentally determined, the motor can be marked with phases A, B, and C, and the sensor board can be mounted down. This process I've developed is specifically suited for use, use with Castle ESCs. I've heard that the VASC ESCs can actually run a calibration cycle and calibrate for any sensor placement, but I've yet to get my hands on one to confirm this. So I've covered the basics of how to design the board, where to place the components, and how to wire everything, but what component should you buy? This was actually something that took me a while to research because there's a wide variety of Hall Effect sensors that all look identical. <clears throat> On screen now is the wiring diagram for my sensor boards, as well as the list of all the components that I use in this design. If you look closely at all the components, the capacitor I'm using is definitely oversized, but this was something that was easy for me to source, mount down, and is through mount, so it's nice and easy to solder. Other than that, every component on here is pretty much the exact ones you want to use. I didn't talk about it before, but the small blue component is actually a temperature sensor. This isn't required for the sensor board to function properly, but all Castle ESCs and nearly all VAS support temperature sensors on the motor, so you might as well throw it on there. On Cthulhu and Maximizer, this is just thrown on the board because I was still testing with it, but this should really be placed inside the motor for a more accurate temperature reading, and you can extend the leads to place it there. That should be about everything for the sensors covered. What I'm going to do is post the physical CAD file for the sensor board and this motor in the description for people to judge offsets, as well as some Mauser and DigiKey links for all of the components so you can go online and buy them. If you'd like to implement sensor brushless control on one of your robots or other projects, but don't have the time or skills required to get this done, send an email to sales at rdcr.us. I'd be happy to take a look and design a sensor board directly for your application. Also make sure to check out our website, rdcr.us, where you can buy these Goldie Box gearboxes used on Cthulhu, as well as get some custom AR600 from us quoted for your specific needs. Last but not least, if you have any questions about these sensor boards, drop it in a comment down below and I'll make sure to respond to it and add it to the video. I'm still learning a lot about these boards myself and want to improve my process and make these even more reliable. So if you know, you know something and want to help contribute, please let me know. That's all I got for today. Stay safe and thanks for watching.